It was a busy day. Robert Mueller, the former special counsel in the Russia investigation, testified before Congress today. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Of course, Mueller's testimony was highly anticipated with lots of people expected to watch, except one guy who claimed he wouldn't watch, a guy notorious for watching more TV than is medically advisable, and that's the President of the United States. Trump said this week he would not watch the testimony because Democrats shouldn't get to keep talking about the Russia investigation. No, I'm not going to be watching, probably, maybe I'll see a little bit of it. I'm not going to be wa watching Mueller. Uh because uh, you can't take all those bites out of the apple. Of course, Trump thinks you can't take all those bites out of the apple because he's never taken more than one bite out of an apple. <laughs> and that was a mistake. This meatball is disgusting. <laughs> but it would have been instructive for Trump to watch because he clearly has not read the report. I mean, it's over 400 pages. There's no way Trump's ever read anything that long in his life. If he gets a fortune cookie with his takeout, he hands it to one of his aides. Just give me the gist. <laughs> In fact, despite his obvious lie, Trump almost certainly was watching the hearings because before they even started, he predictably lost his mind on Twitter. Again, all of these are just from this morning. So Democrats and others can illegally fabricate a crime, try pinning it on a very innocent president, and when he fights back against this illegal treasonous attack on our country, they call it obstruction wrong. Why didn't Robert Mueller investigate the investigators? Why didn't Robert Mueller and his band of 18 angry Democrats spend any time investigating crooked Hillary Clinton, Lyon and Lincoln James Comey, Lisa Page and her psycho lover Peter Strzok, Andy McCabe, the beautiful Orr family, Fusion GPS, and many more, including himself and Andrew W. So why didn't the highly conflicted Robert Mueller investigate how and why crooked Hillary Clinton deleted and acid washed 33,000 emails immediately after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress? She must have great lawyers. No collusion, no obstruction. The greatest witch hunt in U.S. history by far. Dear God, his tweets would make more sense if they were scribbled on paper and faxed to a newspaper under the Zodiac symbol. <laughs> but at the very least, today's hearings might have been informative, both for Trump and for members of Congress, who have admitted they didn't read the whole report. More than a dozen members of Congress readily admitted to Politico that they, too, have skipped around rather than studying every one of the special counsel report's 448 pages. That might explain why some Democrats have spent the last few months trying to educate their Republican colleagues by reading sections of the report into the congressional record, including sections of the report that include colorful language, which has given us fun clips like these. Page 78 of volume two of the report says, and I quote, when Sessions told the president that a special counsel had been appointed, the president slumped back in his chair and said, Oh, my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm What? On Saturday, June 17th, 2017, the president called McGahn and told him to have the special counsel removed. That evening, McGahn called both Priebus and Bannon and told them that he intended to resign. Priebus recalled that McGahn said that the president had asked him to, quote, do crazy it is both great and weird to hear a curse word come out of Elizabeth Warren. It's like watching a nun take a hit off a joint. What they were reading into the record were details from the report on Trump's various attempts to obstruct justice, including ordering his former White House counsel, Don McGahn, to fire Mueller. But Trump has repeatedly insisted falsely without offering any details that Article II of the Constitution, which is about the executive branch, gives him the power to fire Mueller and do whatever he wants. He's repeated that argument over and over, including during a rambling speech yesterday. Article II allows me to do whatever I want. Article II would have allowed me to fire him. Nobody ever mentions Article II. It gives me all of these rights at a level that nobody has ever seen before. We don't even talk about Article II. Then I have an Article II where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that. First, I have an Article II is such a New York way of saying it. It's not jaywalking when I do it because I got an Article II right here, buddy. <laughs> Stop your honking. Also, I like how he says, I don't talk about that, even though he constantly talks about that. 
He's like a grandparent who won't stop talking about how you won't call. I never hear from you. Not a phone call, not an email, not even a card. But still, I don't complain. <laughs> also, Article 2 does not give you the right to do whatever you want. If that's the case, it would have been a lot shorter. This is why today's hearing was so important. A lawless president who openly welcomed foreign interference and then tried repeatedly to stop the investigation of that interference thinks he can do whatever he wants, which is why we need a Congress that will hold him accountable. Now, you heard the president in his tweets today and for the last few months, he was totally and completely exonerated by the Mueller report. And since Donald Trump is known as a truthful guy, I'm sure once the hearings began that Robert Mueller confirmed exactly what the president said. The president has repeatedly claimed that your report found there was no obstruction and that it completely and totally exonerated him. But that is not what your report said, is it? Correct. That is not what the report said. So the report did not conclude that he did not commit obstruction of justice. Is that correct? That is correct. And what about total exoneration? Did you actually totally exonerate the president? No. What? But Trump scream tweeted, no collusion, no obstruction. It was in all caps, and if it's in all caps, you know it's true. Like, when you get an email that says, free boner pills, you know <laughs> it's legit. You're not gonna pay for those boner pills. <laughs> right off the bat, this was a key exchange. We heard from the investigator himself that his report did not exonerate the president. In fact, there was at least one very specific reason Mueller couldn't just go ahead and charge Trump with a crime. And it's because of guidelines from the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, or OLC, that say a sitting president cannot be indicted, which Mueller confirmed today. The chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, also asked Mueller about his attempts to interview Trump, which Trump refused, and revealed how long Mueller had tried to get Trump to sit down for an interview. Did the president refuse the request to be interviewed by you and your team? Yes. Yes. And is it true that you tried for more than a year to secure an interview with the president? Yes. Well, you didn't go through the proper channels. If you want Trump to give you an answer, you either need to go to Fox News or send him a rambling tweet that praises him in syntax he's familiar with. Mr. Very Innocent President, sir, we would love for you to sit down for a very exonerating interview, sir, because you are the best and most not guilty president with the most innocent, sir, and everyone says so, sir. <laughs> and then... And then after the chairman's first questions came time for the Republicans to open up their questions with the ranking member of the committee, Doug Collins, who warned Mueller that he would try to speak slowly and then immediately rambled so quickly even Mueller couldn't follow him. I'll talk slowly. I'm said that I talk fast. I will talk slowly. Your report states that your investigative team included 19 lawyers and approximately 40 FBI agents and analysts and accountants. Are those numbers accurate? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Is it also true that you issued over 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, obtained more than 230 orders for communication records, and 50 pen registers? Uh, that went a little fast for me. Dude, are you a member of Congress or an auctioneer? He didn't get the answer he wanted, but he did sell three paintings and a hog. Republicans also tried to grill Mueller by criticizing him for specifically stating in his report that Trump had not been exonerated. But as usual, they devolved into partisan name-calling when one Republican congressman called Democrats socialists and slammed Mueller for how he handled the allegations against Trump. Americans need to know this as they listen to the Democrats and socialists on the other side of the aisle. I agree with the chairman this morning when he said Donald Trump is not above the law. He's not. But he damn sure shouldn't be below the law, which is where volume two of this report puts him. No, oh, I agree, because that isn't a thing. <laughs> Though if anyone could be below the law, it's Donald Trump. Trump looks up at the law the same way he looks up at an eclipse. <laughs> below the law sounds like a straight-to-video Steven Seagal movie starring Donald Trump. <laughs> now, compare that tirade to the straightforward questions of some of the Democrats, which produce matter-of-fact yes or no answers. An unsuccessful attempt to obstruct justice is still a crime. Is that correct? That is correct. Does that mean you have to investigate all of his conduct to ascertain true motive? No. President Trump directed White House counsel Don McGahn to fire you. Isn't that correct? True. Damn, this hearing was flying so fast, it must have been impossible for Trump to follow along. Remember, he's used to Fox News, where his favorite hosts speak slowly and loudly in words he can understand. Paul 
Ryan needs to step down as Speaker of the House. See, nice and slow in a New York accent. Janine Pirro. Janine Pirro is like Dora the Explorer if she'd grown up on Long Island. Can you help Boots find the auto body shop? Good job, Molto Bene. <laughs> this captured the fundamental weirdness of the hearing. Mueller wants the report to speak for itself, and that report is incredibly damning on its own, which is why Mueller often responded with simple yes or no answers. In fact, so much of this hearing consisted of Democrats just reading excerpts from the report to Mueller and having Mueller confirm that he did indeed write those excerpts. On page 77 of volume two, your report also stated, quote, in addition, some witnesses said that Trump privately sought information about future WikiLeak releases, end quote. Is that correct? Correct. The president engaged in efforts, and I quote, to encourage witnesses not to cooperate with the investigation. Is that right? That's correct. Didn't the president say, quote, and this is on page 116, if he doesn't write a letter, then maybe I'll have to get rid of him, end quote. Yes. Yeah, he wrote it. That's why this whole thing was so weird. He already wrote down everything he knows. It's like if you called in Ernest Hemingway to grill him about one of his books. Is it true that one of the characters is an old man? Yes. <laughs> and he is, in fact, on the sea? That is correct. <laughs> Republicans, meanwhile, tried to impugn Mueller's credibility, like when Congressman Louis Gohmert bizarrely asked Mueller if he was friends with former FBI Director James Comey, who, of course, was fired by Trump after Trump asked him for loyalty and told him to shut down his investigation of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. You and James Comey have been good friends or were good friends for, eight, for many years, correct? No, we were business associates. We both started off in the Justice Department about this You were good time. friends. You can work together and not be friends, but you we and were Comey friends. were friends. We were friends. Gomert might just be jealous that, unlike him, people have friends. <laughs> and this friend of yours, he's someone you can have lunch with, maybe catch a ball game. <laughs> and when you're going through a rough patch in your personal life, he's there to lend an ear. <laughs> maybe your family and his family take a vacation together once. Well, that must be very nice for you. <laughs> Mr. Mo, I have one question for you. Will you be my friend? No. And then Gomer went off on an unhinged rant that went on for so long, he eventually got cut off by the chairman of the committee, which led to a very curt response from Mueller. If somebody knows they did not conspire with anybody from Russia to affect the election, and they see the big Justice Department with people that hate that person coming after them, and then a special counsel appointed who hires dozen or more people that hate that person and he knows he's innocent he's not corruptly acting in order to see that justice is done what he's doing is not obstructing justice he is pursuing justice and the fact that you ran it out it. two years means Gentlemen's you perpetuated injustice I take, your, I take your Gentlemen's question time has expired the witness may answer the question I take your question. Now, apparently, I take your question is a pretty standard legal response, but it sounded like some Dowager Countess level shade. <laughs> I take your question. Now, if you don't mind, do <laughs> right off. In particular, Republicans seem focused on the fact that Mueller listed possible instances of obstruction of justice and said he could not exonerate the president. Republicans basically argued that it was unfair for Mueller to put that information in the report if he could not indict the president, even though the rules specifically said he wasn't allowed to indict the president. But then one Republican congressman accidentally got Mueller to offer an extremely revealing answer on whether Trump could ever be charged with a crime in the future. Was there sufficient evidence to convict President Trump or anyone else with obstruction of justice? We did not make that calculation. How could you not have made the calculation because with the regulation? The OLC opinion, the OLC opinion, Office of Legal Counsel, indicates that we cannot indict a sitting president. Okay, but the... Uh, could you charge the president with a crime after he left office? Yes. 
you believe that he committed, you could charge the president of the United States with obstruction of justice after he left office? Yes. Oh, those are very fast yeses. <laughs> and would you like to be there the day he's arrested? Yes. <laughs> that guy was a Republican. He was a Republican who accidentally got Robert Mueller to say on national television that after Trump leaves office, he can be charged with a crime. You know when Trump heard that, he started pushing the sofa in front of the door. You'll never take me alive! <laughs> the bottom line from today's hearings is the same as it's always been. We just got to see it played out live on TV. Russia interfered in the election to help Trump. Trump welcomed and encouraged that help. And then he almost certainly committed crimes to obstruct the investigation of that help. Mueller couldn't indict Trump, so the only remedy is impeachment. It's up to Congress now. They're the only ones who can hold the president accountable for his... Crazy <laughs> This has been a closer look.